New tech is always a welcome addition in my house, but once I get it set up, I don't wanna spend days and days figuring out everything I can do with the device. I want one source, one document, or even one video telling me everything that I need to know. Well, that's what I've done for you in this video. So sit back, relax, and let's find out everything that you can do with the Echo Dot. Welcome back to another video. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you have been around a while, you probably know that I cover my fair share of the Amazon ecosystem. So if you own any Amazon products or products with Alexa built into it, make sure that you are subscribed because I have a lot of cool videos coming up that should help you get the most out of these devices. Now in this video today, I'm gonna to be covering the brand new Echo Dot fifth generation. But apart from some hardware changes, everything that I talk about in this video is going to apply to older generations of the Echo Dot. So feel free to share this video with any family and friends that you also know who have this device. Also, as we go through the video, I will have broken this video out into chapters so you can skip around and view the things that are most important to you. And also leave a comment and let me know what you would like me to dive deeper into. Now, with that said, let's dive deeper into everything that you can do with the Echo Dot. So essentially, this is a speaker with the Amazon Alexa voice assistant built in. And for reference, I will be muting this word above so it doesn't trigger any of your devices throughout this video. However, if you have changed your weight work, good luck, I would go ahead and mute your device now. If we take a look at the back of the device, we can see a power port and well, that's pretty much it. Gone are the days of having a 3.5 millimeter jack for external speakers. Inside is a 1.73 inch front firing speaker. On the top of the device, there are buttons for mute, volume down, volume up, and an action button for triggering the voice assistant. Now, even though you can't see it, underneath that mesh covering are going to be small holes for the microphones. Now on the bottom of the device is the light ring. This is used to notify you when your voice assistant is listening, but it can also display other colors. For example, it'll show red if the speaker is muted or yellow if you have a notification. The light ring also moves when you're turning the volume up and down. This will give you some kind of indication on what level that volume is. Now, some additional features inside include dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth for streaming audio from your phone to that speaker, or you can connect your Echo Dot to an external Bluetooth speaker. This device is also compatible with Matter. Now, if you are not familiar with Matter, in a nutshell, it is a new way for your smart home devices to communicate with each other. I did do a full dedicated video talking about Matter and what it is. I will leave it in the description if you guys want to check out more. Now, with the newest fifth gen dot, there are two additional features that are built in. We have got a motion sensor and a temperature sensor. These can be used for triggering smart home automations, which we'll be covering in a little bit. It also has a feature where you can tap the top to play and pause music, end a phone call, stop a timer, or snooze an alarm. And this has the ability of being a Wi-Fi range extender if you have the Amazon-owned Euro brand Wi-Fi system. First off, you can't install any apps on this device. Anything that you wanna set up or check is going to have to be done through the Alexa app from your phone or tablet. Everything that you wanna do on these devices is streaming from the internet. So you can't load your own music onto the device. Lastly, this device is not waterproof. So don't put it outside in the rain because it will damage this speaker. Keep it indoors or if you are gonna put it outside, make sure it is in a covered area. So what media can you get on this device? Now, obviously with this being a speaker, we're not streaming any shows or movies, but we do have the ability to listen to music, podcasts, and audiobooks. As for music, we have several different options. In the app, we're gonna click on more, we're gonna go to settings, and then we're going to go to music and podcasts. From here, we'll have a list of all the streaming services that we can use and sign in if we have an account for them. We've also got the option of setting up our default players. So when you're requesting a song or a podcast, it can pull from your streaming service of choice. In addition to that, you can also listen to audiobooks from Audible or request your favorite radio station. If you have multiple Echo devices, you can set up speaker groups. This will allow you to play music throughout the house. Now to set up a speaker group in the app, we're gonna go ahead and click on devices down here, 
click on the plus side up in the top corner. From here, we've got a couple of different options. We are going to click on combine speakers. And here are where we have some options. We can set up multi-room music. So if we wanna combine all of our speakers here, we can do that. You can set up a home theater system. So if you want to pair a couple of speakers and set it up in a home theater type setting, you can do that by selecting this. Or we've also got a stereo pair with a subwoofer. This is going to allow two separate speakers to play the left and right channel. But for our demo right here, we're going to set up multi-room music. We can go ahead and then select the devices that we want to add to this. So maybe we want to go through and just click on our devices right here and get those added into a speaker group. Then we're going to click on the next button. We'll choose a name for ours. Let's go ahead and just click on party time speaker group. I will click on save. And now when we want to use a speaker group, we are going to request our music and ask it to play it on the party time speaker group. Now there are a few different ways to adjust the volume on this device. We have physical buttons on the top for turning the volume up and down, but you can also request to have the music played at a certain level. Set volume to 20%. Set volume to 80%. Now, if you want more control of the sound, you can go into the settings through the app and adjust the bass, mids, and treble. Now, if that's not good enough, you can always connect an external Bluetooth speaker to help improve the audio. This is also gonna give you the ability to move around with that speaker, whether you wanna listen to it inside or outside. All right, to connect to a Bluetooth speaker like we have over here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on devices. We are going to select our Echo Dot fifth generation. And then our option right here, Bluetooth connection, we are going to tap on that to add it to our Bluetooth. And we have C, we got our LG right there. So once I tap on that, we can see that the LG is now connected. So any song that we request on our dot over here will be playing on our external speaker. Communicating on this device is another popular feature. You can make announcements throughout the house, drop in on other Echo devices, and even make phone calls. Okay, we're going to click on the more button and then at communicate up here at the top. So here is where you can either place a call, you can share some photos if they have an Echo show. We've got our drop in and announcement features right here. Now for placing a call, you do have to have contacts set up. So up here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on contacts. Now you can, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this option right up here. We can import our contacts from our phone if you do wanna do that. Personally, I don't want every single one of my contacts imported from my phone, so I leave that disabled and I can just add contacts manually if I wanna do that. You can set up emergency contacts, block, manage all your favorites, different things like that. So that's for setting up your different contacts. Now for me, I've got all of my Echo devices listed here in the app. We've also got groups, quick access, different things like that. So for example, if I wanted to place a call to Emmy, I could say, call Emmy. Or if I wanted to make an announcement, you can just say your wake word and then announce and say what you are going to say. If you don't want to verbally say that, if we go back here and tap on announcement, we can then type it in and it can go ahead and announce something for us. Same thing with drop-in. So with drop-in, we can click here and then we can select the different devices that we want to drop into. Now for a drop-in, that is going to automatically bring up an open communication with that device. So that way you can just essentially pop in and listen to what's going on. Somebody does not have to answer the other side, but they will be notified that somebody is dropping in and there will be a green light on the device knowing that somebody is listening on the other end. Having an Echo device with Alexa built in opens up full control of all of its smart home features. Now, the Echo Dot does not have a smart home hub built inside of it like we see with the bigger Echo devices, but that doesn't matter if we have a device that says works with Alexa on the box. Now, the one caveat to this is that your devices are going to be controlled in the cloud instead of locally on a home hub. So if the internet does go out, your home automations will stop working. When you first get the Alexa app set up and running, I recommend creating groups for each room of the house. This will help later down the road when setting up automations and routines. So I've got a colored light bulb here from TP-Link and it says on the box, works with Alexa. Let me show you how easy it is to get this thing connected. With the app loaded up, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the light bulb. That should put it into pairing mode. With my phone close to that light, it may automatically pop up for me to add. But if it doesn't, I could just say Alexa, discover devices. 
Now that it's connected, let's go ahead and create a simple routine. Load up the app and click on more, and then we're gonna click on routines. We load up into the gallery tab. Now this is gonna give us some ideas of automations that we can create. Now, since I do have so many devices, I don't know if these recommendations are based off the devices that I have already added, or if everyone is seeing the same thing. It'd be great if you guys can comment below and let me know what you're seeing on yours. Now, I have created a video diving a little bit deeper into routines and setting those up. I also have another video talking about 12 different routines that I use throughout my house. It's a pretty fun video and I recommend you guys checking it out. Now, all of these other Amazon videos that I've created and have been talking about in this video, I've put in a playlist. So I will add that playlist at the end of this video, and I'll also have a link in the description for you guys to check them all out. Now, once you get a few more smart lights and smart plugs set up, you can take better advantage of the Alexa Guard feature. If we load up the app right here, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on devices down here at the bottom. And then at the very top, we see the feature that says Guard, and right next to it, it says Home. If I tap on this, We've got some cool things that we can set up right here. So if we look down, it says current status. We've got the option for away lighting. So this is pretty cool. When we do set our guard to being armed, it will activate our away lighting. So it'll turn our lights and our switches on and off if we're not home, indicating to somebody that somebody is present in the house. We've also got a couple other features here. We've got smart alerts. So if it hears a smoke alarm or CO2 alarm, you'll get notified of that or if it hears glass breaking, you'll get notified of that too. Now there is also the feature of the Alexa Guard Plus. If I click here on the very top where it says set up more features, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that and it brings up some of the plus features. Now you do have to have a subscription for the plus version, but if you do have the plus version, if it detects that there is a knock at the door, it can play a dog barking sound. We've also got the ability to activate sounds with sirens and then we've got emergency helpline. So those are some of the additional features you can get if you do have the Plus version. Another thing to mention are the additional features that you get with Amazon-owned products like Ring. If you do have a Ring video doorbell, you can turn on additional features that use your Echo Dots as additional doorbell chimes. To do this, we're gonna jump back into the app. I'm gonna click on devices at the bottom. And then right here in the middle, we've got a magnifying glass. I'm gonna go do that for doing a search and I'm gonna search for ring devices. So we'll do a search right there. These are all the ring devices that I have under mine. I'm gonna to go to the very bottom one, my ring peephole camera, cause that's the one that I like the best. Up in the top corner, we see the gear icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that gear icon. And then here in the middle section where it says announcements, here is where we can set up these different announcements. So I've got it when there's a doorbell press notification to send an announcement to devices. So I can go ahead and click on the announcement devices and I can pick which ones I want this to work on. So this way, if you've got an Echo device, maybe in a kid's room where they take naps or something like that and you don't want that specific device to give an announcement, you can just uncheck that box. Or you can go through and just check every box if you want every device in your house. So it's nice that you can pick the devices that you want notifications on. Now, if you have an Echo Show device, this is one of the devices that has a screen on it, you can set up a feature that when somebody comes and rings that doorbell, it will automatically pop up a live view of your Ring camera on that display. It's a pretty cool feature, but that is just going to be for the Echo Show devices. Now, I did mention this earlier, but if you do have the compatible Euro Wi-Fi network, which is also a brand that is owned by Amazon, you can use your Echo Dots to extend your Wi-Fi coverage up to 1,000 square feet, and the Dots will support speed of up to 100 megabits. Another cool Amazon ecosystem combination is connecting your Echo Dot to your Fire TV stick. This will allow you to use voice commands to control your Fire TV and search for things that you want to watch. Let's jump back into the app and look through the remaining settings for our device. So here in the app, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on devices at the bottom. And then right here in the middle, we can see that we've got our Echo Dot fifth generation. So we'll tap on that and here are some of the settings. So up here at the top, we've got volume, drop in, and then do not disturb. You can turn that on and off. We've got our Bluetooth connections right here. So we can easily connect a Bluetooth device if we wanna do that. Alarms and timers right there. And then we've got our status if we wanna do that. So up here in the top corner, we've got our gear icon. I'm gonna click on that. And this is going to bring up kind of the settings of this device. Up at the very top, we can change the name. So if you wanna be a little bit more specific with the name, you can change it there. We've got our audio settings. So tapping on the audio settings, this is where we're going to adjust our equalizer. 
Below that, we've got our Bluetooth devices. We've got our Wi-Fi network. So if you need to connect to Wi-Fi, you could do it there. We have got speaker built in. So if I click on this, it's going to allow us to pick a specific speaker. So maybe on this device, we ask it to play music, but I don't want this to be the main speaker that it plays on. I want it to be on my nicer speaker that's over here. I can select a preferred speaker for it to play on. So we've got that option right there. Let's back out of that and scroll down a little bit more. We've got the option for a stereo pair. So if you do wanna pair two of these up together and use them as a stereo pair, you can do that. We've got the option of pairing gadgets the tap gesture. So this is something that we talked about earlier for setting up where if you wanna tap the top for it to mean different things. So we've got that. Ultra sound motion detection. So this is where it is going to be able to use ultrasound from this device because there's no camera, there's no way for it to detect motion, but it does do that through ultrasound. So we've got that we can set up right there. We've got our temperature sensor. We can set up our different sounds. So in here is where you can adjust volumes. We can do ringers for incoming calls start of request, end of request, so it's going to play a tune every time you are talking to the device. So that's kind of nice to set up if you want to do that. Let's scroll down here. We've got an option for setting up Amazon Kids. So if you do want to use this for kids, you can set up that option right there. It's going to make the content that goes to it more kid friendly. So if this is not going to be used for a kid, I'd recommend just leaving that disabled. We've got our do not disturb, you can turn that on and off. Communication, so if we tap on communication, this is where we can control the device to allow announcements to come through or allow drop-ins to come through. So if you don't want that set up at all, go ahead and turn that communication feature off. Let's go back down here. We've got our device location, our time zone, our wake word. So if you do wanna change the wake word of the device, maybe you don't wanna use the main one because it's being triggered all the time, here are your other options for this device. Now the ones that you see at the very bottom, the Hey Samuel and the Hey Santa, those are ones that I had paid for earlier on. I think it was like two bucks and you can add those to it. I will say they weren't that great because you have to say Hey Samuel every time that you wanna talk to it and then it will use Samuel Jackson's voice. So it's more of a novelty thing. It wasn't as cool as I thought it would be. So I just recommend don't even bother with that stuff, which I don't even think you can get those anymore. Um, let's see, let's go back down here. We've got a follow-up mode. So if you do want the device to listen for a potential follow-up request, so maybe you ask it to set an alarm and then you want it to listen for something else that you wanna say, you can turn that on here. So it'll do a follow-up. See what else we've got here. We've got our Alexa voice. So here you can change the accent of your device. Number one, I think is a female. Number two, I think is a male voice. And then we've got our speaking rate. So you can adjust the rate of how fast or how slow the device can talk, which is a cool feature if you are having trouble understanding the device. What else do we have here? We have a voice, we've got adaptive listening. You can set our language, our unit of measures, what it is registered to, and that pretty much covers the settings of this specific device. Now, since this isn't an Alexa app review, I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there, but there is so much more that you can do within that app. So there is a wide world of ways to use your Echo device. Features are being added and tweaked all the time, but not all features are good features. And that is why I recommend you guys checking out this video talking about some of the features that you are gonna to wanna to turn off right now on your Echo devices. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you guys in the next video.